Today we have a 1998 Mercury Mountaineer that this brake line is getting ready to break. So we're going to replace this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this off here so I can get this out. And luckily this line just goes up and the analog computer is up in here, unlike the Chevrolets that are buried underneath the seat. So let me get this cut out and I'll make a new line for it and we'll get it installed. Alright, like I said, this line here just runs up from here, right on the other lines, up to this point here. So we're going to take it off here. I'm not sure if we're going to replace the whole thing or we're just going to replace the bad sack section and double flare. But we'll see once I get it out. Let me get it out. All right, so I got the uh, line out of the car. As you see, it's got a special nut. So if I end up replacing the whole line, I'd have to use this special nut comes around but then it also has this flex joint in it which I actually like to keep the flex joint so I think what we're going to end up doing as you see it's rusted from this end just about here so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here make sure the line is good here and then I'll put a nut flare it put a union and, and make myself a new piece of line from here down so I'll be using this part of the original line and we'll make a new line for it. I think that's the best way to do that. It will save this flex joint. And like I said, it's only bad from here down because this is the part that's exposed underneath the car. I will be using the nickel copper line. So this will probably never happen again. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna keep the rest of the line. And this is just the bad section that needs to be replaced. So I'm gonna take my, my diagonal cutters. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the line there. Now I still have this piece to make as a map for my other one. So once I've done that, now I can take my dikes and I can pull off Once I get a grab of this, there we go. I can just start taking and peeling peeling this back. until I get enough of, it, enough of it off. I want to get back to about here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go put this, go over to the grinder and I'll grind this down to cut it off. Let me grind a piece, of, go to the grinder, grind that off and I'll come back. Now that I've gone to the grinder and gr ground the protector off, the protector usually just slides right off. Well, of course it's not because it's tight. There we go. Now it's off. So now I'll... You can actually see that this piece here is pretty thin, so I'm going to cut it behind the thin piece with my tubing cutter to make sure I have a good, solid piece. I do believe this is a nice solid piece because it's taking me forever to cut through it. And yes, it's a nice solid piece. So it's very important that you put your nut on now so you don't forget it. Let me get the tubing bender all set up and we'll get going. Actually, I might not need to. I think I got everything here, so I'll just go ahead and do it. What I like to do when I'm in the back room, I like to put my tubing cutters in the vise. Like this. Find your 3 16th die, line it, line it up here, and this is what we're doing. You put it 
up in your flaring tool, you line, the line sticks out as far as the bottom catch of that. You tighten that up. Will the die fit? Yes, the die fits. Then you get your pusher. Now I've modified mine. If you've been following along some of my other videos about how to flare the line, I welded a lug nut on here to make it work a lot easier. It used to have this rod that stuck through here and you had to turn it, but that was kind of a pain. This way I can just use my ratcheting wrench to make my flare. So there's the first part of the flare. Then you take the die out and you crush it down again. There's your second part of your flare. Loosen your wing nuts. And there is your flare fitting for your one line. So now I'll make the flare fitting and everything for the other line. Let me uh, go ahead and get that all bent up and show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, now I put, went ahead and put one flare on my new line that's going to meet up with my old line. So I put the old line in the vise, and now I'm going to bend this to shape. Right? What I also have is I have these line bending needle nose. It's got this special head, so when you grab grab them, it grabs the line so you can make your 90 degree or 45 degree bends. They are really nice. It'll still take and crush the line, so you still have to be careful. So now I'm going to try to copy this line now. That is what's so great about this nickel copper line. It just bends very easily. So that's pretty much the shape of it here with the S. And now I need to cut it off here and flare this. So I need a little bit more for the flare. And if it's a little bit longer, it better to be a little too long than too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right here. Now I used to have a Sharpie. What happened to my Sharpie? Um, all right, well I'm gonna go ahead and mark this, cut it, put another nut on, but you, remember you gotta put the nut on the line before you flare it. So let me do that, we'll be back. All right, I got my new line bent, double flared. I have my union in. I just tighten that up. So now I can take it to my old line and made it up to my old line. So there's my old part of the line and here's my new part of the line. And I know that it sits in like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the vise. And now I know this sits about there. So now I can go ahead and tighten, tighten this line up to about where I need it to be. Of course, I did make it a little bit longer. So, so I can bend it. Yeah, it's really not the right one. Okay, it 
runs from the ABS computer down the fender well, then it cuts over around the shock and then down to the piece. I think I'm about in the right position. In any way, I can bend this piece very easily by hand while I get it back in there. Let me get it back in the car and I'll put it in. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, I got the line in up top, routed properly. As you can see, here's the union I put in. It's not rubbing on anything. It's not rubbing on the fuel lines. It's coming down through the original holder, right on down to the original brake line. I put a new nut on here, which is 3 8 now. It's tight. I got the bleeder free. Here's another little helpful hint on these bleeders. They've been rusting in real bad lately. If I can get them out, I always get them out. I put anti-seize on them. So after I did that, I used my vacuum sucker, sucked the fluid through. I'll get in and make sure that the pedal feels good. If the pedal feels good, this one's ready to go. I still have to do the back line, which I'm going to do that one also. But this is the overview on how to take and change a brake line on a car. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thank you.